Have you heard about fasting? Have you heard about dietary approaches that you don't understand? In this video, we'll discuss some of the fasting approaches and I also will give you general recommendations for a diet. So, fasting is a natural process. All animals at some point will fast. So, we as humans also are designed to fast, although we're trying to avoid it because of the uncomfort uncomfortable feeling of the hunger. So, if you're interested in fasting, there are numerous benefits to fasting, including obviously weight loss. Number two, you actually will improve significantly your glucose control, which will be tremendously important for diabetic patients, but also for patients who have prediabetes or insulin resistance. Uh, there are also um, a significant improvement in um, cellular metabolism. Uh, there is so-called autophagy when the cells will remove kind of waste materials or damaged cells as a result of this fasting. Um, and there are also some drawbacks to fasting, which we'll talk at the uh, which we'll talk about at the end of this video. Video, but if you're interested in fasting, let's talk how to do that. So we are naturally fasting during the night, so we don't eat hopefully um, um, at, at night. So if we stop eating uh, a little bit earlier, maybe six o'clock in the evening, and we we stop we start eating at six o'clock in the morning, then we'll already have twelve hour fast window which is a good beginner um, fasting. If we'll extend uh, our breakfast time to 8 o'clock in the morning, then all of a sudden we will get to 14 hours of fasting. And if we'll eat our breakfast at um, 10 o'clock in the morning, then we'll have a 16-hour fast, which converts to 16-8 um, fasting uh, schematic, which is 16 hours of fasting at 8 hours of eating. So during the eating phase, it's typically advised to eat normal food, but then when you supposed to fast, you don't eat any food. You always start with a uh, less amount of the fasting, just because it's uh, if you never fasted before, it would be difficult to do that right away, purely because of psychological issues. So this is not related to physiology. You're not going to die of hunger uh, because of twelve hours of fasting. Uh, we we are program to eat lately um, so we're always thinking that oh we're gonna really not feel well if we're gonna fast uh, but in reality vast majority of the patients will be able to fast without any really significant difficulties on the other hand um, some people are proposing or advising a so-called dry fasting i strongly opposing to that this is a fast without <coughs> drinking any water i think this is a really bad idea and extremely dangerous idea. So I strongly advise not to do that for anybody who is interested in fasting. So again, so intermittent fasting is when you will eat for some period of time and then you won't eat for a longer period of time. There is also another schematic when you fast for 24 hours once or twice a week. So what it means is basically you eat normally for two days then you skip meal for the whole 24 hours, either dinner to dinner or breakfast to breakfast. And then you resume eating uh, meals either normally for the rest of the week or in a couple days you'll have another day when you'll fast again for 24 hours. Um, in my experience, breakfast to breakfast is a little bit easier because at the end of the day you will be really sleeping um, through the rest of your fast. So it's a little bit easier to tolerate, although some, some people like to do it dinner to dinner. Um, the <clears throat> 24 hour fasting is a little bit more, uh, difficult again, psychologically, it's not really, uh, difficult physiologically, but psychologically, just because you don't eat and everybody around you is, uh, are eating, uh, you kind of really want to, uh, have a social aspect of the meal, which you'll be missing. But again, as you progress through fasting, if you will start slowly with 12 hour fast and then you'll go to 16 hour fast, in reality, from going from 16 to 24 hour fast is quite easy. And you really don't need to do 24 hour fast every day, really just maybe once or twice a week. Um, again, if you'll start fasting, your glucose uh, will significantly improve. So if you're already diabetic and you feel you're already on, on, 
um, uh, diabetic medications, you have to be very careful. You have to really measure your glucose because you may develop hypoglycemia, especially if you take your medications on top of your diabetes. So you have to be monitoring you closely. On the other hand, if you are pre-diabetic and you're not taking any uh, uh, medications for glucose or you have just insulin resistance without pre-diabetes, then fasting really would be a, honestly a lifesaver to, for you. Um, what are the drawbacks? Well, the drawbacks, we, we will be hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and again, um, it's, a, it's a purely um, uh, psychological, our brain plays games with us. We're not really hungry. We're not going to die from hunger because of that. But it may be somewhat unpleasant feeling, especially if you used to eat frequently uh, and snack also frequently. Again, the other dangerous part is the hypoglycemia that we talked about. So you have to be careful if you are taking um, a glucose medication, glucose lowering medication. Um, Fasting in some patients will be causing a little bit of stress. So if patients have already some adrenal issues, then they may not be a good fasting candidates until they will uh, improve their uh, adrenal issues. So again, if you have so-called adrenal fatigue, you really don't want to be fasting um, for a very long time. So how, what, what do we eat in between fasts? Well, Certainly, you can eat whatever you like to eat. I would not advise you to eat uh, junk food because that's the reason why you're fasting is to improve your health. So really putting junk, uh, junk food in your body in the periods between fasting is not a good idea. Um, so what do we eat? Well, the general, again, it's a very general approach, is that 40% of your calories should be coming from complex carbohydrates, which are basically vegetables, tubers. Uh, root vegetables, leafy vegetables. Mm -hmm. So all of them will um, help you to um, uh, really not only uh, fill you up with the carbohydrates, but also will give you a lot of fiber, which is also very important for our health, for our gut health. Then about 30% will be protein and the rest of it will be fats. Uh, you either will get fats from your protein, from your fish, for example, from your meats, but also you can add some beneficial uh, oils like uh, avocado oil or olive oil to your salads when you eat your green leafy vegetables. So this is a very um, brief overview of the fasting and uh, appropriate diet. Um, I plan to uh, give uh, to, to create a little bit longer video about the diet that I recommend to my patients who already had a stroke and who typically have diabetes. And I kind of will describe a little bit more uh, my approach to that di diet uh, in the next videos. Um, thank you for watching. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, talking to you next time.